I was gonna wait to record this video until I wasn't feeling sick, but it is in fact December 30th and I cannot wait any longer. Hi besties, it's Shar. Welcome back to my channel and welcome if you are new here. Apologies that my voice sounds so raspy. As I mentioned, I have a cold, which is unfortunate, but I think it will pass. But it would be my luck that the weeks that I'm on vacation, my body's like, sickness so i am here to do my top books of 2023 my top 10 books of this year this was a really hard list to put together not because i had so many options but because i had too few options quite honestly i think a lot of people share the same sentiment that in terms of reading 2023 was a pretty meh year and while i do have my top 10 i want to disclaim that these are just my top 10 of the year they're not necessarily books that were published in 2023 although some are they just happen to be the best of a pretty mediocre year so some of the books on this list are actually going to be four star books and not five star books i also want to tell you that you're going to notice a distinct lack of monster romances on this list and that's because i have two more best of year uh, videos coming out in january i'm going to have my best books published in 2023 list and i'm going to have my best of monster romances of the year with that long list of unnecessary disclaimers out of the way let's jump on into the video i tried to rank these in order of like my personal preference in terms of how much i enjoyed these books but honestly because some of these are four star reads it was pretty difficult to do the bottom like six books are interchangeable the top four the top four coming in at number 10 we have the jassad air this was such a fun book for me to read it is a romanticy in my opinion about this woman who was a child she was the princess of the jassad kingdom there are four ruling kingdoms in this universe and the jassadi people had magic and then one day all of the other kingdoms got together to kill all the jassadi people there was a massive genocide they killed everyone who is Jasadi and continue to be on the hunt for anyone who is Jasadi and they get executed if they have magic and they are Jasadi people. Now my girl was the princess and she is just trying to live her life. She's running away because when she was rescued from the massacre she was taken in by this bodyguard that worked for her family and this bodyguard uh, put her through some pretty extreme and torturous trainings from the age of like seven or eight years old so she very much is just like i don't want anything to do with this i just want to live my life and i want to be in hiding and then we have our love interest aaron i think his name is although i could be dead wrong about that aaron is the prince of the kingdom who ruled or who oversaw the genocide of the Jasadi people. He is one of the generals who leads the instructions for how they do that. And of course he recognizes right away that she has magic. He needs her as a lure for the Jasadi rebellion groups that are rising up. So he forces her to become his champion in these sort of trials and games. I really enjoyed this book specifically just like the world building of it and getting to know this fantastical world and like these underlying conversations about duty and obligation versus like what you feel is right and what you personally want to do. I didn't particularly love the romance between Aaron and Sylvia but I did love this whole underlying uh, theme of deception between the two of them which I thought was so much fun. The magic system in here is really fun to explore but ultimately I did give this book four stars just because I thought that the uh, competition elements of this was a little bit boring and really could have been more fleshed out like it was exciting in the moment but it was so brief because so much of the book is leading up to the competition and I thought that there were some pacing issues at number nine we have ascension as you all know I put this book on my most anticipated list on a whim and I was really blown away by how much I enjoyed this book I've talked about this book at length in other videos so I'm not going to do that in this video just know that this is a book about a um, mountain climbing expedition for scientists because this mountain that is bigger than Everest just pops up in the middle of the ocean and people are like what the fuck is that so they go to explore the mountain and find out what's happening and it's very much a story about survival and grief and I really enjoyed that because I wasn't expecting the emotional complexity of this story and just 
the many conversations around grief i don't think that it is for everyone i think that if you don't enjoy mountain climbing expedition stories you're gonna find this really boring and i think that you may also be turned off by the religious conversations and religious undertones throughout this story it didn't personally bother me which is bizarre because usually conversations around religion did bother me but this was subtle enough i knew it i sensed it but it didn't take up the majority of the story at number eight we have while we were dating by jasmine guillory which i read in my reading seven books in seven days challenge this was such a cute romance from jasmine guillory in this book we're following anna and ben now anna is a famous actress who's coming back into the spotlight after a year or so off because her anxiety got really really high and she just needed a break and she is now trying to come back and get an oscar she takes this small gig um like doing an advertisement for a cell phone the gig with the advertisement for the cell phone is how she ends up meeting ben ben is an advertising executive or at least he's aiming to be he's a little bit lower than that on that level and he ends up directing the shoot that Anna is on they end up in the situation when there's a lot of sexual tension and they're really into each other and for some reason or another they end up fake dating to help Anna's reputation as part of her plan and her goal to get an Oscar that year and of course fake feelings lead to real love this was such a cute romance especially if you love the fake dating trope it was very spicy and very steamy for my girlies who are looking for that in their stories but also just their relationship was beautiful ben also had anxiety and was dealing with family issues and how ben and anna support each other through their struggles with um, mental health and with their lives and their goals and where they want to be was just really sweet and wholesome without making the story feel too emotionally heavy i thought it was just such a fun book to read and i really rooted it for ben and anna's relationship i would have loved to see more of that because i thought that they were so cute together at number seven we have the bride Test by Helen Wong. This was such a surprise to me because I read The Kiss Quotient a few years ago, I think in 2020 or 2021, and I thought it was fine. But I picked up The Bride Test as part of this reading challenge I was doing where I got assigned to a random person and they told me their favorite books and I read their favorite books and I didn't make a video on that. That was just like for me private fun times on Discord. I read this book while I was in Panama on vacation so like full disclaimer the fun vacation vibes that I had could have definitely been influencing this. In the story we're following Kai and Esme. Kai his mother is very worried about Kai and thinks that he should have a wife so when she goes to Vietnam to like visit family wrap up affairs she meets this girl and she is trying to find Kai a bride she ends up meeting Esme and Esme comes over to the states for the opportunity for a better life for herself and her family and she knows that at the end of this she has to marry Kai she has to convince Kai that they belong together a lot of the things in this book you would think wouldn't work for me because Esme is very much lying to Kai throughout the entire of this story but again I think the way that the author manages to bring in so much emotional complexity within this and conversations about um, migration, belonging, family, responsibility, duty, boundaries like all of it was so well done and I just really loved the relationship which I'm gonna say is a testament to the author's ability to write a story and write it well because for you to get me to love a relationship where one of the characters is lying to the other character throughout the entirety of the story that's some impressive skill because ultimately I sympathize with May. I understood the pressure she was under, why she felt the need to lie, and all of these social norms and expectations and hierarchies she was trying to navigate to do the best for herself and the very important people in her life. And we have The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poulsen. You know this book, you've heard this book, it was nominated for the Goodreads Choice Award. You have no doubt seen this on many other best of the year books, but I adore this so so much and it's such a unique premise. So in this book we're following Clementine and Ewan and Clementine's aunt has passed away and she is dealing with a lot of grief as is the usual so far for Ashley Poston's book. A character dealing with something that is very emotionally heavy who has left her her apartment in the upper west side of New York City but the thing is this apartment is magical and every once in a while you'll walk into the apartment and realize that you are seven years in the past. 
I view it as a time loop. So one day Clementine comes home and she sees this random man in her apartment and she's like, who the fuck are you? But the apartment has completely changed from when she fell asleep to when she woke up and then she realizes she's in the past and so commences our love story. This was just such a romantic book. The relationship between Clementine and Iwan was so beautiful to see, but you also recognize that each of these characters were individuals and stood on their own had their own goals and their own lives and there was this underlying conversation about how people change over the years and if you fall in love with one version of a person in this case the person seven years in the past can you still love that person after they've changed in the future and of course the answer is yes here but it's more understanding that love and relationships and people do change and just because change happens doesn't mean that that love also has to disappear so it was just so fun and wholesome just such a beautiful read and I loved it I definitely think it deserved to win the Goodreads Choice Awards but you know that's just me right at number five we have the Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi, which I read when I was on my little solo vacation in Miami. So, just like the bride test, the vacation vibes could have very much been influencing this. But let me tell you, listening to the audiobook for the Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi while on the beach looking at clear blue waters unparalleled. The Adventures of Amina Al Sarafi is the story of a woman who is a pirate. Now, people don't know that she is apparently a pirate, they just know the pirate. Asarafi and she's retired she's just trying to raise her daughter she's trying to take care of her family she's like the pirate life I left that behind until one day the family member of one of her former shipmates comes to her and says I know that you are the pirate Asarafi my granddaughter has been kidnapped and I need you to find her and if you find her I'm going to offer you an obscene amount of money but if you refuse I'm coming after you and your whole family <laughs> so Amina agrees to help her just for the sake of honor to her former shipmate. That commences the adventures of Amina al Sarafi, where she is back on open water trying to track down this young girl who has been kidnapped according to her grandmother. And you're trying to unravel the story of exactly what happened with this girl, like what the real story is, but also Amina getting back into the swing of things of being a pirate and being a badass. And as I've mentioned before in so many videos, you all know that I love a badass woman. This this is such a good story if you're looking for something that's action, adventure, fantasy, funny, has some romantic elements to it. And if in general you just like a pirate story, I would really recommend that you check this book out. Coming to the final four books on this list, Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, which I know is somewhat of an unpopular opinion because lots of people say I didn't, that they didn't like Hellbent. I loved Hellbent. And if you're not new here, you know exactly why I loved Hellbent. I can't tell you too much about the plot of this one, just know that it picks up from Ninth House, where we are now unraveling the next mystery, trying to save some people and learning more about the mythology of the world. I do want to say that I saw Katie Colson put this on her worst books of the year and make a very valid point of what happened in this book that furthered the plot. And do we actually know what's going to come next? And does Lee know what's going to come next? I don't know, but I still love this book. I was here for the vibes. I was here for the world building. And I was just like, yes, I'm here. I'm invested. I love the characters. I love this book. At number three is These Fleeting Shadows by K. Alice Marshall, a beautiful gothic horror. This is the story of a 17 year old girl who goes back to her family's ancestral home after the death of her grandfather. And she finds much to her surprise that her grandfather has left her everything. But in order to inherit this, which would change the lives of her uh, mother and her stepfather and herself, she needs to stay on the property alone for one year. She stays with the family there but not with her parents. She agrees but she finds that she keeps waking up in the middle of the night digging holes outside. There are bizarre rules that she has to follow. The family is hella creepy and very much upset that she is the one to inherit this and I will just say this because one of the plot twists that completely blew me away and made sense of everything else in the story. It's also sapphic and the magic in here like the way k alice marshall weaves in magic and stories of girls who are harmed and abandoned and forgotten this is such a beautiful story if you love 
gothic horror and if you don't mind the slower pace that sometimes gothics can have i would really recommend this i recommend it in general just because it's so damn good but you know you do you number two is a surprise i don't want it stars collide this book i didn't even know was coming out i literally picked up on a whim because i saw it on ku and i was like okay so in this story we're following a mega famous pop star who may or may not be taylor swift just saying the author never says that she is but you know there's a lot of hints that she's taylor swift <laughs> anyway so she is um just released an album called after midnight and it's not doing so well but she is out of that music she knows that her life has changed she's recently gone through a breakup a divorce from her husband and her agent her publicist suggests that she does the grammy award show with an up-and-coming musician who has a huge and dedicated fan base they do they have great chemistry on stage they perform really well together and so our main female character the mega famous pop star invites this other pop star to be the opening act for her world wide stadium tour and you're telling me that's not taylor swift anyway <laughs> it is a sapphic romance we end up following the story of them on tour throughout the world the traveling aspects of the story was such a pleasure to read and just learning more of like the behind the scenes or the author's interpretation of behind the scenes of such a massive stadium tour how they avoid the paparazzi but also how our main uh mecca famous pop star character ends up finding herself and realizing like her sexuality and her identity and the many ways that she has been conforming to comp head and they just fall in love and it's so sweet and it's so wholesome and I love fictional books following celebrities, books about world travel, books about sapphic romances, so you can see why this worked so well for me. I also just thought it was really well written and that's what puts it at number two on this list. I love how I just get more nasally as this video goes on. But don't worry, besties, because we are at the number one book of the year. Emily Wilde's Encyclopedia of Fairies. A surprise to absolutely fucking no one because this book, a masterpiece masterpiece i absolutely loved it it is so cozy it's so dark it has involvement of fae but like the true like darker nature of fae as it traditionally appear in stories and in this book we're following emily wilde who is a researcher she wants tenure at her university but she researches fae the fae world and the various types of fae and how they exist in cultures and in life in this world they are real and you can research them. She ends up going to this very small fictional town somewhere in like Norway, that region. <laughs> she should try and discover the fake creatures there, but she ends up helping the town out with so many of their fake related mysteries. And of course her frenemy, Wendell Branfilby, that's a mouthful, <laughs> um, arrives at the scene. And the way Emily just tells you about Wendell, how they interact with the story, I will not tell you anything beyond that, is so sick and sweet. Brambleby is such a funny character like he makes me laugh throughout his interactions with Emily so much and the relationship between Emily and the townspeople is just so cute and wholesome but also the author crafts these very vivid scenes that are just so magical and have this underlying tone and feeling of dread throughout the entire thing that I'm just really impressed with her ability to build character to create this world to completely make up this entire system of like fae and fairies and what they do while also incorporating traditional elements of fae stories um and then the romance and the relationships and like it feels like you are reading fairy tales throughout this it's just great it is great it is such a fun time if you love fae magic romances fantasy atmosphere this feeling of dread if you want a little bit of fear and darkness with your fave romances check this book out and so besties that does bring us to the end of this video as always thank you so much for watching i hope that you did enjoy it in the comments down below let me know what your number one book of 2023 was and if you feel you had a good reading year in 2023 because I myself as I mentioned reading year was pretty mediocre and I feel like a lot of people had that same sentiment but I want to know what your reading year was like as always thank you so much for watching if you are not already please do subscribe because it supports me and this channel and I have so many fun videos coming up throughout the year of 2024 so you want to stick around and I'm going to see you in my next video bye Thank you.